Hey everybody, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Today is a very special day. This is our very first math tutorial video. Um, this video is going to cover lesson 1.5 in your math book. And the title of that lesson is Algebra slash Multiplication Patterns. The essential question for this lesson or what you should be able to do by the end of the lesson is understand how you can use a basic fact to multiply by a two digit number. And when we are talking about basic facts, we're talking about those facts that you learn in second and third grade. Do you know your facts of two? Do you know your facts of five? Do you know your facts of seven? And so on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set myself up with the whiteboard so that you can watch me do a couple of sample problems. If you're a student, go ahead and watch this to help you get through your homework tonight. Or if you are absent, you can use this video to help you to show you what we did in class today. And if you're a parent, this is for you so that you can help support your child as you try to help them with their homework tonight. So I will see you in just a second. All right, we're back. So before we go into an example from today's lesson, there's just a set of patterns that I would like to show you that's going to help us out as we go through um, the example problem that I'm going to show you as well as talking about what your homework is going to look like tonight. So here you see that we have our facts of 10. Uh, we have 2 times 10 is equal to 20, 3 times 10 is equal to 30, 4 times 10 is equal to 40, and 5 times 10 is equal to 50. These are considered your basic facts, and everybody knows they're tens. And a lot of people like the tens because they know it's really easy to multiply by the tens because to get 2 times 10, all I have to do is really think to myself, 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1 zero, and that gives me 20. Same with 3 times 10. I can think, oh, 3 times 1 is 3 plus the 1 zero, and that gives me 30. So the tens are really easy for that reason. The other thing I want to quickly talk about is our powers of 10. Now in later chapters we'll go in more detail about powers of 10 and do a little bit more work with them, but we do want to know some basics of our powers of 10 for today's lesson and for tonight's homework. What you need to know is that when you see something and it's written as the first power of 10, that is the same thing as you just saying 10. When you see something and it says the second power of 10, the second power of 10 is the same thing as saying 100. The third power of 10 is the same thing as saying 1,000, and the fourth power of 10 is the same thing as saying 10,000. The other thing that's really nice is that you can use these exponents, the smaller numbers that you see in your power of 10, and notice that the number in the exponent corresponds to the number of zeros in the product or in your power of 10. So see there's a one here that has one zero. There's a two there, there's two zeros there, this has a power of three, there's three zeros there, and this has a power of four, and there's four zeros there. So just keep this in mind as we go through a problem from today's lesson and then talk about tonight's homework. So let's do that. I'm gonna write a couple of sample problems from the lesson today. So today's sample problem that we're gonna look at is 300 times 20. Okay, now remember the essential question from this lesson is how can you use a basic fact and a pattern to multiply by a two digit number? So here we have 20, our two digit number. And the first thing that we want to do is we don't want to panic and say, oh my gosh, I don't know my facts of 20. Well, nobody knows their facts of 20 by heart. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at this whole problem and ask ourselves, is there a basic fact in that problem that I can pull out and help me solve the, the problem? And hopefully you would see that, yes, I can look at 3 times 2 as a basic fact because I easily and quickly know that 3 times 2 is 6. So the first thing I'm going to do is solve that basic fact. The next thing you want to do is you want to then think about the pattern that I just showed you. And think about how we multiply with uh, our facts of 10. Everybody knows that 2 times 10 is 20 because they multiply 2 times 1 and then they add the 0. Same thing here. You're going to multiply 3 times 2 to get 6. And then you're just going to make sure you include the zeros from your two factors. So you're going to add the two zeros from the 300 and the one zero from 20. And that gives you 6,000. And that is the answer or the product to 300 times 20. Now that's one quick and easy trick, and just to make sure to show you why this works, I'll go ahead and multiply 300 times 20 the traditional way. And the traditional way would be 300 times 20, and you would write it this way, and you'd multiply each of these factors down here times the factors at the top. So zero times zero is zero, zero times zero is zero, zero times three is zero, 
you put a placeholder there because now we're moving to the tens place. Two times zero is zero. Two times zero is zero. Two times three is six. Then you would add those two together. Make that a little bit neater. You bring the zero down here, bring the zero down there, bring the zero down there and your six and include your comma. Now notice you get the same answer here as you did up there, but this was just much more efficient. It was able to be completed a little bit quicker than that. So that's the first set of understanding what we're doing in today's lesson. Okay, so this is what your homework is gonna look like tonight. And initially I'm sure you guys are gonna panic and say this looks completely different from what we did in class today. What I want you to realize is they're just setting this problem up for you differently. They're showing you your basic facts. So they're showing you the basic fact up here and then they're showing it to you here, here, and here. On this side, instead of writing the number 10 or 100 or 1,000, they're expressing the number 10 as a power of 10. They're expressing the number 100 as a power of 10. They're expressing the number 1,000 as a power of 10. So just keep in mind that this is really 10, this is 100, and this is 1,000, which is what I showed you just a couple minutes ago. So all you have to do in your homework is first think about, well, let me solve my basic fact. Eight times three is 24. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that up there so that I know that that is the number that I'm dealing with in terms of basic facts. When you get here, you're gonna do the same thing. Eight times three is 24. I'm dealing with one power of 10, which is the number 10. And I know there's only one zero in 10, so I'm gonna add that zero here. Also, you can use a little cheat trick that I showed you that says this exponent is also telling you how many zeros are gonna end up being in your product. So there's one there, one zero there. Second part of the problem, solve your basic fact. Eight times three is 24. You're multiplying that by the second power of 10, which is 100, and 100 has two zeros in it. So I'm gonna add one, two zeros, and make sure to include my comma. And then eight times three, your basic fact again, 24. I'm now multiplying by the third power of 10, which is the same thing as me saying 1,000, and there are three zeros in 1,000, so I'm gonna add one, two, three, and add my comma. So that's how you're gonna do your homework tonight. So when you realize what they're doing for you, it becomes quite easy. So as you're completing your homework, that's what I want you to focus on. First, look at the problem they're giving you, solve the basic fact that they set out for you, and then each time you're solving the basic fact first, then asking yourself, what power of 10 am I dealing with, or how many zeros are gonna be in that power of 10, and add your zero to the product of your basic fact making sure to include your commas wherever you need them. So I hope that helps you, and I'm gonna flip the camera around and give you some closing thoughts, and we'll be done for the day. Okay, everybody, we're back, and we're joined by my dog, Genesis, because I'm sure you guys heard her shaking around in the background. So I just wanted to put her on camera at least once, because I'm sure you're, you will hear her in the background in a lot of my videos. So just to wrap up today's lesson, just make sure that before anything, you look at the problem, solve the basic fact, and once you've solved the basic fact, the rest of it should be pretty easy. You're just paying attention to the powers of 10, making sure you have the proper number of zeros, and that should be it. Um, if you need help with your basic facts, I hope you don't, but if you do, feel free for this lesson to use a multiplication table because right now I just want you to understand the concept of today's lesson and not get too stuck on your multiplication facts. Aside from that, don't forget to put your first name, last name, and number on your paper so you get credit, and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye!